What's up guys? It's that time of year again. The 2014 roundup video where I talk about 2014 games. This is not a review. This is not a ranking. None of that. It's just my experience of 2014 games and then at the end I'm just going to talk about what I thought about gaming in general for this year. So yeah. I really liked Valiant Hearts. I was I, I was completely surprised because I didn't know it was the type of game where you solve um, puzzles, you solve um, problems in order to move on. The thing that I loved the most about this game were the characters. I, I found them so just freaking adorable and, and the biggest reason was because of their characterization they felt so like cartoons but it was crazy because it was such it wasn't a cartoony story it was a serious story that was deep and emotional where you're just like oh my god this game is about war and a real war and what happened and stuff like that so i thought they did uh ubisoft did a great job with this with this game telling the story uh but also making it lighthearted because if it hadn't had that lighthearted feel to it with the characters and the way they talked um and also with the way it looked and all that and there were little bits of humor uh stuck in there if they hadn't done that it would have been just a depressing game but i i still enjoyed it it was chapters um and you got to play different characters and it was a nice change as well because it, it it's not the type of game that i play anymore i used to play these types of games more back then but not anymore now it's more like you know third person rpgs stuff like that so it was it was nice to go back to that type of game and still see that i that i still t enjoy it I already have a review up, so if you want to know more about what I think about this game in detail. This game was the first game I played uh, on the PS4. This was the first full-length game that was exclusive to the PS4. As gorgeous as it was, because it was very, very well done when it comes to the, the, um, the characterization especially. Uh, the way that the characters look, the way that the characters move, the talking, it was just, it was, it was great. The cinematics were flawless. But when it came to the gameplay, I was really disappointed because I was like, I played a little bit of Infamous, Infamous 2. I remember this gameplay feeling the same as an Infamous 2, uh, or Infamous 2. So I didn't see much improvement when it came to the gameplay with the way the character moved. Now there were some, the, the powers, the way that the character used the powers was pretty cool. Like the powers were awesome. But when you were just like the, the parkour stuff where you're jumping from building to building and all that, that was not flu fluid. Like it, it was, it wasn't, the character wouldn't react the way that you would want the character to react like you you would press press a button and and they wouldn't do what you were telling them to do that's what i was like this does not feel next gen you know next gen to me is supposed to feel fluid it's supposed to feel like like the ps4 it has this like synchronization with the controller and and it's just happening you know what you do is 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 just it's just communicating uh directly and it's just there is no downtime and and you know i want to see a fluidity there that's what i think of when i when i think of next gen of, of course many other things but one thing is fluidity and um there being uh an improvement in the connection between the controller and the system as well as advanced gameplay mechanics because of the power in next gen but there were no real advanced that that i was like whoa that was nuts i haven't seen this in previous gen N this felt like i was playing on the ps3 i've seen some really good graphics on the ps3 like last of us the mocap for that is is so good so i was like okay you know this the mocap for this 
wasn't out of the, it was good it was really good it was flawless almost but I've seen pretty close to it in the PS3 and the gameplay was just I felt like I was playing the PS3 I wanted to feel like I was playing the PS4 because this was the first game I was playing on it and I wanted I was like dude this is gonna feel amazing oh my god I got a new a new console I got a freaking PS4 and it I was like it didn't feel different so I don't know if I was putting too much expectation on it because it was the first one. Maybe I shouldn't have put so much expectation, but I don't know. I feel like it's not an excuse um, to, to, to maybe use previous gameplay mechanics. I think they should have maybe at least took those gameplay mechanics and advanced them, which they kind of did with the powers, like I said, but not so much everything else. Everything else felt like kind of the same as Infamous 2. It feels like the transition from old gen to next gen has been really slow. As limited as old gen was, when I started playing next gen, I started to see that old gen uh, was capable of quite a few things because I was seeing some of that stuff in new next gen where I'm like, I've seen this before, you know, there's nothing really new yet. At first, I was like, ugh, another Assassin's Creed game and it feels the same. Again, this is next gen and it's the same damn mechanics. I was so pissed off. I was like, I can't believe it. After you get through the tutorial stage and after you start getting the hang of um, the way the combat works and all that, I started to see a difference. I started to see that the, it's not exactly the same as previous uh, Assassin's Creed's when it comes to the mechanics and the gameplay. Now, Assassin's Creed has always been great when it comes to graphics. I remember the very first AC AC game that I played, Assassin's Creed 1. Um, I remember being blown away by by the, 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 the environments when you would synchronize. So now with the environments when you're gonna synchronize and you see the whole city, um, you could see, it's not just like there's a blurry, kind of blurry, um, you know, off in the distance buildings that are a bit blurry. No, the, it, you could see everything. Everything looks crisp and it's like, oh wow. Like you could tell that this is next gen when you look at it. And also when you're moving, when you're running through, I like, I like that about this. Um, if you pay attention, uh, where I was like, okay, there is a difference here. Th this is what I'm talking about. This fluidity when you're running, uh, on the buildings and you're jumping and you're doing all the Assassin's Creed stuff that you usually do, um, trying to get away from people. The the gameplay mechanics are have always been a little bit choppy with that, where sometimes you, the character does something that you did not want them to do. You wanted them to go forward and they went off and jumped over there and started climbing and you're like, no, I wanted you to go down or whatever. And it just, it's so frustrating, but that's, that's been in every Assassin's Creed game. And it's, it's understandable because of the same, the button, the same button does everything. You literally just have to hold it, let it go, hold it like that when you're moving. Right. So sometimes it just, you know, it's mixed up and you end up doing something that you didn't uh, want to because you were near the wall instead of near over the near the pole over there but when you're jumping and running on the rooftops and and all that it it's different it feels different the camera is now moving with you it's not just it's not just following you you now feel the movement the the moments where you could really notice it is when you're jumping from say a higher rooftop to a lower rooftop and it's kind of far when you jump the camera just goes like it, it just it feels like you're jumping and it's like you know the character will will it, it'll focus on the character jumping and it, it just the animations the gameplay animations because they're not cinematics 
um, are a little more fluid and that does feel more um, real to me the way that the the character would move around the rooftops but like I said that's just the visuals and not so much the gameplay I've always had a problem with Assassin's Creed combat it's always it's almost always been the same thing almost always it's just combos this time it felt a little bit a little bit better there was more control sometimes it would glitch and you'd be freaking pressing a button and he'd just be standing there and not doing anything you could now specialize in a specific type of weapon i really like the long range which was the spear oh also the 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 cover to cover stuff you can now get into cover you could you could sneak which which i was like this the sneaking like seriously why was this never in an assassin's creed game i mean come on you're an assassin like seriously you should the first thing you should have been able to do was sneak and get into cover and stuff so why they waited this long to introduce that i don't know and then of course the multiplayer or the co-op multiplayer which i think I've tried it a little bit, um, and I think it is, it's pretty fun because there are actual missions in the game where you have to be playing co-op in, in order to do the missions. Now, they're not forced on you. They, they're just there where you're like, if you want to do a co-op mission, go do it. Oh, and another thing that I was like, oh my god, I was so happy about this. Now, this, this should always be in an Assassin's Creed game. Customization, and not just complete suits because it's always been just complete suits they're they're separate now they're not just one piece uh and you could choose different colors they're, they're not just one set color uh so you could mix and match if you want a hood a specific hood they that does something you know they, they're not just there for looks they do something they'll they'll give you points in if you want to focus more in stealth or if you want to focus more in range or if you want to focus more in melee that kind of thing they will all do different things and you could create your character um at, however you want not only with your weapon your style of weapon but also the the the, the type of um uh, gadgets and gizmos that you use and uh, the your armor as well doing this is more geared towards the co-op so that you each have a, 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 a specific character so that they're not all the same character so that you all could work together like say there's one that's focused on ranged another one that's focused more on up close and personal with say a two-hander so you are forming a character that will help you in the single in the single uh, player but will also make things more interesting in the co-op because you are bringing in your own unique character or at least semi-unique character to to the group so that you all don't do the same thing i do want to go back and finish it obviously because i have to do a full length review of this uh because this is a, a review copy so i have to get on on this and and finish it this game i have had less time to play um but i am interested because I don't really want to go into spoilers about story with these games, but uh, this game is a little bit different. This is an old gen exclusive. This is a review copy as well, so I really, these are priority. I want to show some footage of this game as well, so I'm probably going to be filming a little bit of it, maybe do like a MD Adventures type of thing. I played a little bit of this game. I like Dark Souls just because of the challenge, especially after you play it for a while. You're like, man, this is, I love this type of challenge. Um, I love the feeling of actually beating an area or beating a boss. But that's pretty much what this game is about. It's about beating a boss or beating a bad guy. It's about skill. It's about um, how you make your character. It's about how careful you are. It's really about that. Even though it does have a story, it's not really story focused. It's not really character focused. It's an RPG that's focused on the gameplay and not so much everything else. And I am more of a fan of RPGs that are focused on the story and on the character development. The point to this game is not enough for me 
to stay hooked. I was hoping that it was going to be different with Dark Souls 2, but it wasn't. It was pretty much the same thing. Now, I'm not saying that this is a bad game. It's not bad. It's just, for me, like I said, this is a personal experience type of video. For me, it just didn't, it didn't hook, hook me. I had high hopes with this game because I really liked the idea. I was like, oh, sweet. You get to play a ghost type of character. Um, you know, you're dead and you are looking for the person that killed you and stuff like that. But I kind of just put it aside for a lot of reasons. But one of the major reasons was because, you know, when someone's trying to be cool and it's just not working, it felt like that. <laughs> like it was trying to be way too cool. And you're just like, I remember loving the introduction though. The introduction was really, really cool. It was the, his tattoos were telling a story. The writing is kind of dull and it gives you choices of like what to say and stuff. And you're just like, like I really, it, I wasn't feeling it. And I don't know if it's because it was like the beginning and all that. Um, maybe it, it'll pick up later. I haven't heard great things about it, so I don't know if it really will pick up. But the writing just sound, just felt bland to me. This game is always right here on my mind because I'm like, I need to beat this game. And I'm almost done with it too. I'm not going to give my full thoughts on this because I want to give it all on my review but let's just say that it's really hard for me to finish this game it's been really really hard for me to finish it because it's very repetitive it feels like Assassin's Creed kind of with the missions that are a specific type of mission uh, there's maybe like four types of missions throughout the game and they just keep repeating itself just with a different story with a different character that kind of thing it's 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 similar to assassin's creed doesn't surprise me it's ubisoft the thing that just completely turned me off is the story and the characters if that suffers in a game i'm most likely not going to enjoy that game so the gameplay was fun enough for me to keep playing but I haven't beaten this game, but I was enjoying it, especially the nemesis system. The nemesis system, dude, really, really fun, really addictive, uh, and just I would love to see an advanced version of this, a different version of this type of AI uh, when it comes to the enemies. The enemies will remember you. They will move up in rank. If you die, it's not just like, okay, well, let's reload. Let's go right back. You die and time passes and the enemies level up. Not just you. You are not the only one that levels up. It's like the world does not revolve around you in this game. It makes you not want to die because you're like, oh my god, I'm going to get killed by this little moron. This stupid little orc. And when I come back, he's going to be some general or something, you know? And it's just like, and you just want more revenge. It's, it's about revenge. <laughs> the nemesis system is about revenge, not only on their end, but on your end too. Because you're like, that little punk, that little punk killed me. And now he's leading those other, or no, forget this. I'm going to slit his throat. And this game um, definitely did show what next gen is capable of when it comes to AI. And not just graphics, but AI. Because this one didn't, this game didn't have the best, like the most amazing graphics. It had good graphics. But I have seen better graphics this year than this game. It's exciting to see that it's capable, that next gen is capable of, of improving AI systems. It being a Lord of the Rings game, the lore is there. It is the base of this game. Like you could feel the lore, the Lord of the Rings lore as it as the base of this game. It's separate enough to not get swallowed up by the, the immense shoes that is Lord of the Rings. I just got this for Christmas. I wanted to get it the day it came out, but I didn't because of the price. This game is approximately about four hours long it's it's the prequel to phantom pain so it's not a full-length game it was like 30 something so it, it, a lot of people made a huge deal about it i was like 
okay, yeah, it's pretty expensive, but I can't really judge it because I haven't played it. Some people have beaten in an hour, but they don't realize that there is more content in here. It's not just an hour long game. There is a lot of content in here. I think I spent like half an hour um, just listening to tapes. And I had a really good time. Listen, it was funny because I was just sitting there um, covered up in my blanket and I just lost track of time and I was just listening to the tapes um, that that in the menu system, there's tapes. The most awesome thing is that the sounds are the same. You know, it's the same sounds. And I think the exclamation point, the three, I think it's in this game. I'm gonna freaking die if it is. I think that's brilliant that they did that, that they kept a lot of the sounds from the previous games. The mechanics are hard to to get used to. It's like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I still don't know what I'm supposed to do. But if you get it down, it's pretty cool. It's a really cool stealth system. But I, I tried playing Metal Gear Solid um, Snake Eater and I got really bad motion sickness. Like I was gonna barf when I was playing. When I lose my sense of direction, I get dizzy. I get dizzy and I get nauseous. And the snake was crawling under a building, I remember, and it was dark and I couldn't tell which way was which. I was like, I think I went that way. I couldn't tell which way was right, which way was left. I didn't, everything looked the same. It was dark and it would go into first person because you were under an area. So it was first person. So I started to get really dizzy and I'm like, oh my God, I can't do this. So I had to stop. So I couldn't play Snake Eater. Although I had seen my brother play Snake Eater when he played it. So I know most of what happens in that in that game. I was like, until this game is a, is a decent price, I'm going to get it. It was $9.99 on Amazon. And again, I got, I got dizzy. I'm like, what is wrong with Metal Gear? Like, what is it about this game? And this game, I think I know why. I got dizzy, but I was like, the previous games, that wasn't the issue. The beginning, you guys, those of you that have played Metal Gear, you know that since, I mean, since the very first games, it was very, it was very cinematic. It was very, it felt like a movie, especially with, let's say like Metal Gear Solid 4, that's where it started to feel like a movie where you get, you get these like intense cinematics and stuff. It's, it's kind of the same with this game, but they upped it up a notch and they added hand, that handy cam feel. It's one of the reasons why I despised the Hunger Games, the first movie. Because of that stupid handy cam, oh my god, that makes me feel so sick. The minute I saw that type of camera in, in movement in the beginning cinematics of this, I was like, oh God, I it kept on trying to like look away. And I'm like, I, I'm not gonna look too much at it. And it's just like this stupid camera that's moving like this. And I'm like, why? Like, why do you have to do that? Is it because you feel this is artistic or something? No, it's not. That triggered my motion sickness and it just, it threw everything off. I couldn't play anymore. I was like, I'm going to try to play again without seeing that introduction because now I saved in a moment where it's just gameplay. It's just pure gameplay. If I still get dizzy just with the gameplay, then I don't know what it is because it's a third person. I've played third persons. I've played third person games. So I'm just going to try again. I'm not going to give up on it because I really want to play this game. It looks amazing. The enemy system. Oh my God. The AI. It's so sensitive. Like yesterday, I didn't even know. I was like, how do I freaking crawl? Like, I didn't know how to crawl. And I just moved a little bit and the enemy already saw me and they were like behind a fence. And it was like, oh my God, no, <laughs> trying to get away. So it's like, you got to be stealthy or you're going to be getting caught the whole time. Like Metal Gear Solid, it's a stealth game. There's a really interesting map feature and it. I still don't get it. Like it has different options like one of them says gps and another one i'm like oh my freaking god i don't know what's up <laughs> it's a type of system where you kill someone and you have to hide them or else someone's gonna find the body and then they're gonna be like oh they're all gonna get into heightened 
and they're gonna be looking for you and stuff. Not like in Assassin's Creed where they just get look, they start looking for you for a little bit and then they go, oh, whatever, we didn't even like that fool anyways. <laughs> I'm gonna try again and I'll let you guys know how this goes because I'm, I really want to play Phantom Pain, but if I can't even get through Ground Zeroes, Oh, and Kiefer Sutherland, I hadn't, on purpose, I hadn't listened to the new Snake. It's weird. Because <laughs> I'm used to hearing David Hayter. I guess it's just like a mental thing where you're just like, it's not him. But, I mean, I think I could get used to it. I think Kiefer Sutherland did a, a, a decent job. When I was first listening to his voice, I almost felt like the voice didn't match the, the, the face. But I think, like I said, I think it's more mental than anything. So maybe playing the game more, I'll get used to it. But like I said, Kiefer, Kiefer Sutherland didn't do a bad job. I think he did a pretty good job. I mean, he's a well-trained actor. So I'm curious to keep playing and listening to how he uh, represents Snake in different situations and stuff. It's such a fun little game. It's adorable uh and just fun and the story is good it has a main story uh but pretty much what it is is you choose from a life uh it's kind of like a class for it's an rpg so uh, but it's a different type of rpg because you don't just choose from fighting classes you also choose from non-fighting classes like you could be a little fisherman you could be a miner you could be an alchemist uh, or you could be a fighting class which is like a paladin which is sword and shield a mercenary i think is two-hander and a wizard so you could you could choose to fight monsters or you could choose to just stay in town and and make uh mine ore or make potions and stuff but it's not just sitting there and doing that like you do have quests you have masters who teach you how to do these things you level up aside from the main quest you get side quests i started off as a miner i wanted to do blacksmith but i started off as a miner but i've been playing co-op with my older brother and his uh his wife uh we've been playing so it is online co-op the co-op is really cool because you have incentive to do it. My brother was a wizard and my sister-in-law was an alchemist. Let's say a side mission says go to this one cave and get this one thing or go mine this one ore at this cave. And I'm like, okay, I'll go. But there's like a bunch of monsters there. And I'm like, I can't survive this. Like I, you have a sword. Everyone has a little sword, but you're not going to survive. Like you're going to freaking die because you're not a fighter. Um, you're either going to die or it's going to take forever to kill a monster. So I would tell my brother, I was like, hey, can, you know, let's co-op because I need your help. I need you to take out these monsters while I go mine this place. And not only does it benefit me, but it also benefits him as well because he gets uh, experience from this uh, also. And since I'm a miner, I could get ore for him that he needs for side quests because if some side quests say you need... 10 silver or uh he he can't get it there's no way for him to get it unless he has a miner so i go i get the silver ore for him he kills the monsters and i get to go to the cave that i needed the cool thing is that you could change lives you don't have to stick to what you chose you level up in your in your life but you could always change lives my little plan was i'm gonna start off as a miner and then become a uh, a blacksmith so that I can now mine things and create things with the stuff that I mine. Later, I, I'm going to be a paladin so that I can make my own armor and weapons. So it's fun. My brother started off as a wizard and he is now a fisherman. Um, and he looks so funny. He's, he could create your character. You, you could create how they look like. Um, you could be male or female, but my brother's character looks so funny. He looks like an old dude, like a little old dude, and he's got these really funny eyes, <laughs> and he's got this, like, big mustache. <laughs> he totally looked like, like a wizard. And if you're like, well, I don't have anybody to do co-op with, so this is pointless to me, you could always just, um, invite NPCs, uh, to your party. You could get, I think, two, two people on, in your party. So there are like little, like this girl right here. I don't know if you can tell her. 
she's a paladin and she's just chilling there in town she's like practicing you could uh invite her as an npc so she could fight for you and stuff i bought a dog and he fights with me as well so i was like yes he's so cute he's perfect I wasn't ranking any of these games, but I am going to say, I don't even have to say it, I'm sure you guys know that this is my game of the year. I don't need to finish playing it to know that this is my goatee. The characters, the story, I'm so hooked. I, I'm not going to give too much details here because I'm, I'm planning more videos, obviously. I know a lot of people have suffered through bad glitches, especially on launch. I haven't gone through any bad glitches where I'm like, oh my god, this is mission breaking or whatever. Uh, I haven't gone through any of that, thank god. I don't know if it's other platforms that are having issues, but the PS4 version for me is running perfectly. I, I mean, I have seen some some funny glitches here and there, uh, you know, where people are sinking into the ground or the Inquisitor's floating or... You know, they're doing some funny little jig or something. You know, funny things where I'm like, that's hilarious. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Love it. I am almost 200 hours in. I'm like at 80, 188, I think. I think I will be accomplishing almost everything my first time around. Uh, that's usually what I do. My completionist is always the first one because I want to do everything fresh because the, sec the, the next playthroughs are just quick run-throughs with just to test different characters, different options, that kind of thing, just to test the story. I'll even put it to easy um, next playthroughs because I just want to get through it fast. First time around is always the most important to me, so I never rush. I just take my time. <laughs> when it comes to what I've been playing, mostly 360, PS3, and PS4, mostly PS4. It was an okay year. So that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later.